Hi everyone, so I had a request to do a panoramic panel card. Now I hadn't heard of a panoramic panel card, so I had to look it up um, and I discovered that this is what it is. So it's um, it, it's quite nice, I quite like it. I have to say I've seen better examples than the one that I've done here. Um, I think it looks best if you have a scene. So I did, um, I saw Jan B, Jan B had done one um, and she'd used some, uh, I think they were stamping up papers, uh, and you basically had like a horizon so the horizon went across the middle and then she'd stamped a few little extra bits on ships and whatever and it looked amazing looked really really good um you definitely need a large pattern i would say if you have a small pattern it's just not going to work if you want to stamp um make it your own scene up and then cut it up that would work um but yeah it's quite nice the other thing as well that went wrong on this card was the fact that i used um my pattern and my matte layers were a bit too small which is why i've got no gap at the side there so i'm going to try again today um and i'm actually going to use because this was a five and three quarter by five and three quarter card blank um but i'm actually going to use a six by six today because i think it's going to work better um and i'm going to i've changed the size of the mats and the patterns for the front um I've kept these sizes the same, so I'm hoping it will work. I did actually record me making this card yesterday and got almost to the end and I was just getting the important bit of sticking things down and I realised for some reason my camera wasn't recording. So it was too late by the time I'd finished, because that was when I realised that it wasn't recording, to then go back and redo the bit that I'd missed. So I'm just going to make it again today from scratch. So this is the card we're doing. Um, so yeah, so let's get into it. So for this card, you are going to need a six by six card blank. If you haven't got a six by six, then you need a six by 12 piece of card. And you're going to score it down the middle at six inches to make a six by six card blank. I'm going to do this as a top fold. You don't have to, but I'm going to just because um, I just don't want it to be falling forward. And sometimes it does if you've got like heavy layers. I haven't really got heavy layers this time around, but just because I can't be bothered with the drama, we're going to do it as a top fold. OK, so on the front of that, you're going to stick a matte layer that is five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths and a plain layer. Now, you can go plain white, but because my pattern piece doesn't have where well, it doesn't really have any white on it, it's more this kind of peachy color. I thought I'd go with a similar color, plainish kind of pattern paper, as it were. Um, but, you know, you can go just plain white for this. You want something very plain. I wanted a bit of interest. But you can go, you know, you just need to go very plain on it. And this one is five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that onto there and that onto there. Now, I would normally not have such a narrow border. OK, I usually like to have, um, I usually go a quarter of an inch more than the previous size card. But for this card, it does, I think it does need to be such a narrow border. Because you need all the space you, you can in the middle. OK, so I'm going to go ahead now and stick these down. OK, so then after you've done that, you then need to now you don't have to do this, but I found it helpful. Find yourself a bit of scrap card and cut it out to five and a half by six and a quarter. OK, and then out of the middle of that. Uh, what, what I did was I put my, my piece onto my, a piece of card onto my scoreboard and I just scored at one inch on every side. So then I ended up with a frame in the middle that's one inch in from all sides. And so in the middle, your aperture, which you're, going, which you're going to cut out, is three and a half by four and a quarter. So you cut that out and so that's actually the size of what you want your pattern paper to be or your scene or whatever it is that you're cutting up into sections to make the... Um, so this bit here, basically, whatever this you want this to be. So I, Jan B had actually recommended this, and I do think it's a very good idea to do. So that's what size your car, your paper, whatever you call it, needs to be. Your main focus needs to be. It needs to be three and a half by four and a quarter. So I've cut out this from um, a craft, uh, craft sensation pad. And basically what I did was I got this and I used this just to make sure that I got, I cut out the right bit because I wanted that cloud to be going kind of through the middle of it. So that's why I used this. So I could kind of find, um, you know, where, what, what I wanted to see. So the same with this one here. I wanted these three flowers 
and so I could have just cut out a three and a half by four and a quarter but I might have ended up with more of the background than I had flower for example so in order to accurately see what it is that I want that's what we use the frame for so you don't have to do this you can just randomly cut it out if you want to or if you can eye it properly that's fine but I just found this very helpful so once you've got your piece of card um, your pattern paper or your stamped image or whatever it is you're using in the middle to three and a half by four and a quarter you then want to cut out a piece of mat card that's three and five eighths by five and one eighth okay now obviously you can see it doesn't exactly fit you've got a big gap don't worry about that because we're going to be cutting this up in fact we're going to do that first and then we're going to come on to this one so i'm just going to put these to one side for now okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this up into pieces and each of the strips that we cut it up into are going to be different heights okay now i'm going to put a photo in now of a little table that i've done well a little picture a little template i suppose you call it of what of what i'm cutting them down to okay so i'm going to put that in now okay so i'm now going to go ahead and cut this down so as you saw on the on the template you've got an a and an a a b and a b a c and a c and in the middle a d okay so the a and the a needs to be five eighths um wide so i'm going to go ahead now and cut five eighths off here and five eighths off here now i don't need to do it that way um but i am just for my own so i can remember what i'm doing so i'm going to cut five eighths width wise off either side so then my two little five eight strips i'm now going to go ahead and cut three quarters of an inch off either side of the piece that i have left on the guillotine okay so then my three quarter inch strip in inch strips and then the next two need to be five eighths again and then i will be left with the middle one that is one and one eighth so i'm going to go and cut off the bit that i've got off off um, camera on my guillotine i'm going to cut um five eighths off either side and then I'll have a one piece left. Okay, so that's all my pieces cut out. So these are my A's, B's, C's and my D. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we'll look at the table again. And you can obviously go back and have a look. I'm not going to put it back up on the screen again. So the A pieces need to be two and one eighth high. So I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to cut these down so they're two and one eighth high. Okay, so there they are. They're two and one eighth high. Now my B pieces need to be two and five eighths high. So I'm going to go away and cut those down. Okay, so I've cut my two B pieces down to be two and five eighths um, high. So then my C pieces need to be three and one eighth. So I'm going to go away and cut my, these down to three and one eighth. Okay, so there we go. So we've cut them all down. Now I've left them level at the top just so you can see the differences that, um, that we've got. Now obviously they, they're not going to be like that. They're going to be more like this on the card they're going to be more like that on the card but just so you could see and also because they're matte you only have to cut them off the bottom when we come to the pattern which we're doing now we're going to have to cut it the, a certain amount off top and bottom because we want the pattern to remain kind of central you'll see what i mean in a minute so i'm going to put these off to one side and i'm going to leave them in their little order so we don't get muddled up so bringing the pattern back in again here's the pattern so obviously we want it to be like that so it goes like this okay so if we just take a certain amount off the top it's not going to do that because then your cloud isn't going to line up so you need to take it off the top and the bottom so i'm going to put up a picture now of the pattern paper and what widths and lengths needs to be and then i'll talk you through it Okay, so we're going to start with the outside pieces, the A pieces. So the A strips need to be half an inch wide. So I'm going to go ahead now and cut half an inch off this side and half an inch off that side. Okay, so there's my A pieces, okay, my A strips. Then B needs to be five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead now and cut five eighths off this side and five eighths off that side. Okay, so these are five eighths. Now we're going to cut half an inch again off either side, and then we should be left with a piece in the middle that's an inch. 
Okay, so that's all of my pieces cut into their widths. So now we have to do the heights. Now this time I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to work outwards. I just find it a bit easier because this one is going to stay the same height that it is now. So we're going to leave that there and we're going to work with our C pieces. So our C pieces need to be three inches high. So what I'm going to do is instead of just cutting it so it's three inches high, I need to take a quarter of an inch off the top and a quarter of an inch off the bottom. And I need to do the same with this one. So I'm going to do that now. Take a quarter of an inch off the top and a quarter of an inch off the bottom. Okay, so I've taken my quarter off the top and quarter off the bottom. This one here needs half an inch off the top and half an inch off the bottom. So this is my B strip. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's those done. So now I've just got to do the A pieces, the A strips, and these need three quarters of an inch off the top and three quarters of an inch off the bottom. Okay, so that's all my strips done now. Okay, so now what we need to do is go ahead and stick all of these onto the corresponding mat strips. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so there they are all stuck down on their mats. Um, so now we need to stick them onto the front of the card. Now, what I would advise you do is obviously this is the front of your card. So what I would advise you do is find the dead center because you want to stick your your center one down first. So I'm just going to bring this in. Now obviously it's, it's three inches, so that's nice and easy. So uh, sorry, three is the center. Um, the width of this is one and one eighth. So half of one and one eighth. So if we find this that where three is, there's three. So we need to come half and then a sixteenth. And so here again, half and a sixteenth. So that should be the edges of our strip. So if I bring this strip in, yep, yeah, that fits perfectly. So what I need to do now is I'm going to stick this down, making sure it's it's straight, it's not wonky, and making sure it's um central top and bottom as well so i'm going to go ahead and stick this one middle strip down it's very important that you get it bang on central if you kind of eye it you might end up with a bit too much gap on one side not enough gap on the other so it's, it is really a good idea to measure for this card also make sure your card opens the right way before you stick it down and then we're going to go ahead and stick it on making sure it's nice and straight this pattern is actually helping me get it straight which helps which is good so that's that there so now what i'm going to do is go ahead and add these on but just literally place them so i can see roughly what kind of gap i need to be putting in so that i can get them all on and i also need to be making sure that the actual pattern so the cloud on mine all lines up as well so that's about, so I can do about that much gap, which is better than I had on the other card. So I'm now going to go ahead and just start sticking them down either side. Um, and I'm just going to kind of, I could do one side, then the other side, that would be fine. As long as you're making sure that you're working from the centre out, that's the main thing, I think. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that that cloud lines up and that I've got a relatively even gap top and bottom I haven't got too much gap in between each panel I just make sure it's kind of in the right place this is why I find wet glue better to use than tape you can use double-sided tape and when I did my card yesterday I think I did use double-sided tape because I had mirror cards so I had to kind of use double-sided tape but it's a lot easier using wet glue because I can kind of shimmy things around a bit. So for example, that one I've discovered I can make it a little bit further out. So I'm going to do that there. I think the bigger the gap you have in between, it is actually slightly better. Um, it kind of adds to the impact. The other thing as well I think that I will do if I do it again, is I think that I will actually make these three strips all half inch. I don't know that this needs to be five eighths because I just think you could just have a bigger gap. So I think I probably will see that gap is bigger than this gap here, but it's fine. I don't mind it. OK, 
Okay, so there's the completed card. Just need to add a greeting on it. But as you can see, I do think it works better with this cloud. With that line across the middle, it makes it more... I don't know, it just seems to work better than using a, um, a pattern. I quite like the pattern, don't get me wrong. But I think you get more of a kind of perspective on it if you have a like a line and if you imagine you've had like a horizon that also really helps um yeah so that's that so i'm going to go ahead now and i'm going to add a greeting add some gems and i'll come back to you in a moment Okay, so I went ahead and just added some pearls at the top and a sentiment down the bottom. Um, and I used Lucy's Shop Crystal Collection Sweetheart. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pearls, all different sizes and colours. Definitely recommend using them if you don't already. Um, check over and check out her shop. Um, yeah, so there we go. So there's the finished card. So I do like it. I think it's a really nice card. It is a bit of a faff to do, but once you've figured out your measurements um, and I got my measurements courtesy of Jam B. I did change the card blank size because as you can see because you have got a bit of a gap here but here I haven't and that's because I didn't put the white layers on. Um, I think if I did it again I might just make all of these half an inch and then just that would end up being um, slightly bigger um, but yeah I, I think it's a nice card um, I like the way it works so yeah so have a have a go at it um, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, hit the notification bell so you never miss a video and I will see you next time. Bye!